Hola chicos, I'm Paul. And I'm Bea. And in this video, we are giving you our personal experience with medical insurance and hospitals here in Valencia. And of course, stick around to the end to know how much everything cost us. All these and more after the intro. So backstory, one of the reasons that we left the U.S. was because of healthcare. In late 2019, we lost our sister-in-law to cancer. And then, of course, four months after that, COVID hit. So we were suddenly faced with the reality of our mortality, as well as how weak our insurance coverage would be if we ever got hospitalized for a long period of time. Back in the U.S., whenever I felt something, I usually contacted our nurse or doctor relatives and friends to tell me if what I was feeling was urgent or not. It's either that or I do the next best slash worst thing, WebMD. You couldn't imagine how much anxiety I've developed over the years. Even when I was talking to my psychiatrist, all I tell him is that my fear is getting sick because we can't afford to be. So there I was paying this shrink $75 an hour for my anxiety because I was dreading a $40 copay to see my doctor. I should have hired a financial planner. Fast forward to today, we've lived in Valencia for a year and a half now and have used our insurance for annual physical checkups as well as visits to the ER. And, for us both. Yeah, and um, even eight days stay in the hospital and laparoscopic surgery to remove my gallbladder. So to list all that we've done collectively, we've done blood tests, urine tests. For me, a women's wellness exam, so that's the pap smear, the mammogram, which actually didn't hurt too much, and the breast ultrasound, which hurt. <laughs> and then random ultrasounds, like for him, they had to check his stomach. Uh, I think it, you got an MRI, I think he got an MRI. Definitely an endoscopy, an EKG, and the laparoscopic surgery, and the hospital stay. So you can say that our first year and a half was quite eventful here in Spain. Thankfully, our visa requires us to have full private medical insurance with no copays, no waiting, and no deductible for our time here. So, um, oh, and we also registered with the Centro de Salud since anything COVID related at that time had to go through them. And they were the ones who electronically sent our COVID prescription to the pharmacy. And then for our second year here in Spain, we also became eligible to pay into the Spanish healthcare system called Convenio Especial, which I heard is great, especially for someone on maintenance medication or who has pre-existing conditions or long-term illnesses. For anyone under 65, it's 60 euros a month. And then if you're 65 and over, it's 157 euros a month. We haven't applied for the Convenio Especial though because right now we think our private insurance is enough for what we need. So here are the things that we love about our insurance. So far from our experience, we can pick any specialist that's on their directory. I don't need a referral or endorsement from a GP or from my primary care physician um, or from the insurance company. If I want to go to a dermatologist, I can just look through their directory, select one that I like or is near me, or maybe they speak English, then I go to that one, schedule an appointment, and that's it. The doctors can order a blood test, ultrasound, or a scan without asking the insurance company's approval. For those times that we needed the insurance approval, it was for non-emergency skin treatments, but that's it. This one is my favorite. So since our insurance covers everything, I don't get any paperwork regarding payments or, you know, the dreaded explanation of benefits. Every time I have paperwork, it's because these are our medical results. We also get 12,000 euro coverage for no less than 90 consecutive days worldwide coverage except for the country of origin. Which in our case would be the Philippines. Oh, that's why we didn't get insurance? Ah, got it. So our Filipinos, that's our country of origin. <laughs> So now here are the important tips. The most important thing, I think that's why this is number one, follow your doctor's orders. When your doctor says, come back in a week, make sure you bring this, 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 and this, you do it. Don't talk to anyone else. He's pertaining to me, so yeah, when, when I tried to be proactive and ask the front desk of the hospital if we needed to have his surgery approved by the insurance, 
they sent us around in circles. So they said, yes, you need to get this approved by the insurance. Insurance says I need something from the doctor. It took us about like a few days not getting anything done. And then on the day of the surgery, we just brought all of the paperwork that we were instructed to bring at the beginning and they took care of everything. So we, you cannot be too proactive. Yeah, they took, it took us, because it was uh, when they released me from the hospital, it was five days before the surgery. So it took us five days to try to figure out how to get the approval and go take a cab from the health center back to the hospital and the hospital to somewhere else. And yeah, there is no point. There's no point. Should have listened to the doctor. Another thing that we've learned is while many healthcare professionals in Spain speak English, learning basic medical Spanish phrases can greatly enhance your experience and communication. So you kind of like, you, you need to study Spanish so that you could go to the less busy hospitals or you could download the translation apps. Why do I say that you could go to the less busy hospitals? Because the, the hospitals that have doctors and staff that could speak English that's where all the expats go to so if you need to see a doctor immediately or anything there's going to be a longer line as opposed to the the more local hospitals you need to also download the app of your healthcare provider if they have it so maybe when you're choosing a healthcare provider you need to consider one of those things um, when you download the app, it's easier to book an appointment or even check your results earlier instead of going to the hospital or visiting the doctor. So if you need medication, your doctor will provide a prescription. You can take this to any pharmacy anywhere you are within Spain to collect your medication. So you're not tied to a single pharmacy. Another tip is make sure to check your coverage. Not all health insurance companies have the same coverage. So you should probably choose the one that has a plenty of doctors who accept the insurance. And then dental insurance is extra for us. Only the cleaning and exams and x-rays were free. Getting the cavities filled was about 50 euros each. And again, also check if they have clinics in your area. It's like for us in Valencia, there's two that are close by. So for our insurance, the Adesles has dental, Their right? own clinics, yeah. Their own clinics. Adesles has their own clinics. Okay, that's good. You do not know this? I thought all of the insurance companies have their own I dental. I don't know. We'll see. Another tip is make sure to seek out your community. And by community, we mean social community like Facebook groups or forums uh, to connect with other expats um, to be able to get recommendations for doctors and healthcare facilities in your area. And of course, emergency numbers. Save your emergency numbers on your phone, including the local police, fire, medical services. We'll put all of those numbers in the description below. Another thing we've learned from our experience and the experience of others, when scheduling appointments with doctors, it's important that you need to specify the nature of your visit. In the Spanish healthcare system, appointments for different medical services are often separate. So for instance, if you need a physical checkup as well as a blood test, you typically need to schedule these as dis distinct appointments. But also you could probably tell your doctor, maybe they could do it in one time, but you have to specify exactly what you need. Don't assume that <laughs> even if you're seeing the doctor, they will automatically address all your medical needs. Also very important, most of the non-emergency doctors and clinics are on vacation in August. Cerrado por vacaciones. And now we get to our insurance provider and cost. We picked a Deslas because we saw that a lot of the people in Valencia had it. Um, these are like when I was looking through um, the Facebook groups for our non-lucrative visa application. And also because that the, the website for Adeslas was in English. So Adeslas also knew of the non-lucrative visa requirements and they had an insurance package specifically for us applicants. So it was just easy. I saw the price, I knew I liked it, and that was it. Last year, our insurance cost us 588 euros for medical and 120 euros for dental per person. So that's a total of 1,416 euros for the year. 
This year, it cost us 607 with 56 cents for medical and 107 euros for dental. So our total for this year is 1,431 euros for two people for the whole year. Keep in mind that all of the medical expenses are covered and for the dental, our cleaning and x-ray are covered. I didn't know they increased every year. It was a difference of 15 bucks. Still good. So it's been such a relief to know that we are covered fully by our insurance. The safety net of not going into debt for needing medical attention is fantastic. We can sleep better at night. While in the U.S., we were always careful not to do sports that could land us in the hospital. No jiu-jitsu, no extreme sports. Even when I was playing basketball with my friends, I'm like, I'm not gonna jump, you guys jump. Because I, I can't afford to jump. <laughs> so, even so, our worry was that we could be hospitalized for an appendix bursting or, you know, like we get into a car accident or something like that. So it's a good thing that Paul's gallbladder acted up here. Yeah, I'm glad because I received really excellent care here. The hospitals were clean. I had a private room. It may not be the most modern, but you know, it's it works. It's uh, it it's very roomy, and their facilities are very modern. And I was able to stay there as well. There was a couch there that had its own linens, and I had my own pillow. They did not kick me out. They were used to the fact that there is, in the Philippines, it's called the bantay, someone watching over the patient. So they were very, they knew. I guess it's like a very cultural thing too. So. They allowed me to be there for the long, I mean, for as long as he was there. Yeah, and as much as there was a language barrier, they really tried to help me understand what was wrong with me by speaking into my translator or speaking to me in Spanish. Or when one of our friends, Joe, was there, he was the one who was translating for us. But they, they want to make sure that everything is clear. And it's funny because it's not like they're doing it for legal purposes, but they really want they really want us to thrive and, you know, heal faster. The best part was leaving and not having to sign or pay for anything. Yeah, we went by the nurse's station with our bags and we made sure that they saw us and we're like, we're leaving? And they're like, yeah, okay, bye. Yeah. And that was fantastic. <laughs> we just walked out of there. With no, it's been what? It's been like five months already and we still haven't received a bill. And I don't think we ever will. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. Thank you so much for watching our videos. If you have your own experience with the Spanish healthcare system, please share them with us. You know, we're still new here. We're still learning and we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I think we, we also know, we, we also want to know what to expect in the the coming future you know so any um, any comments suggestions or anything uh, we'd really appreciate it thanks for commenting on these videos it really helps us craft better videos for you guys thank you for the people who bought us coffee and churros at the buy me a coffee link it's really nice to feel the support and we get to enjoy a little bit more of like the afternoon sun with a little churro or a cafe and even through Buy Me A Coffee for exploring uh, the other different ways of supporting our channel. If you want to know more about life in Spain, you should watch this next video. Thank you, bye! Another... Is it a global? Another tip. Yeah, tip. So, so take... Oh, go ahead. So that... <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wait. Going. No, because I wanted to say one thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs>